Hi, I'm Brent with Tech Tool Supply. One of the most popular questions we get here is, how do I balance my modulator? So uh, here today I have um, a head-end system with uh, six modulators so we can quickly go over how, what these four adjustments on the front of each modulator means. Now there's a couple tools that you're going to need to do this. Um, one is a little uh, screwdriver, um, very simple. The other is a signal level meter. Now, unfortunately, there's no way around it. You absolutely need one of these to balance a system like this. Two of these four adjustments on here, the only way you're going to see it is with this meter. And it's, uh, you know, both those adjustments are very important. So um, any signal level meter uh, designed for cable TV will work. Uh, here I have Holland Electronics ST4000D, which is a very, very good meter. Um, let's start by uh, looking at the back of this rack. And I just want to go over basically how these modulators, modulators are wired. Each modulator has uh, two inputs and one output on it. The yellow wires here go to the video in on the modulator, the red wires go to the audio in on the modulator, and the blue wires go to the RF out. Now, these are both being fed by a couple of DVD players and a DVR. Um, you can connect them to, to uh, everything from CCTV cameras, satellite receivers, anything that has a composite uh, audio video out on it. The RF out here, um, what we need to do on here is combine the signals. We have, you know, six different modulators, six different wires. Well, we need to combine those down to one wire, so we use a combiner. Now, uh, they, they make special combiners, 12-port, uh, 24-port, that mount on the rack. In this case, we're just using a six-way splitter backwards as our combiner, which works perfectly. Uh, if, you're, if you have a system that's that eight or less um, modulators, just get a really good quality splitter. Um, it, it'll work just as good, save you a few bucks. Anything over that, you're going to need to get like a 12, 12 port rack mount combiner. So, if you're using a splitter for a combiner, it, everything's going to be backwards. You're going to use um, all the outputs on the splitter as your inputs, and your input is going to be your output. I know it sounds a little confusing, but it'll make sense. On the, uh, the actual output of the splitter, which is actually labeled an input, you're going to take that out and um, in this case I have a three-way splitter on here. Now the reason I have a three-way splitter is because I want to have one port for my monitor set, one port for uh, a, so I always have a test port for my meter, and then one port that goes out to the distribution. Now you can, you can skip the monitor set, you can skip the meter, I personally recommend both of these. Uh, they'll save you a, a lot of headache for service calls and setup. The monitor set here is nice. If you ever get a customer that, you know, complains that their system's down, uh, you can go right to the head end, turn your monitor on, and you'll quickly know whether it's a problem with your head end system or if it's a problem with their distribution. Also makes it nice when you're setting up the system. Uh, you quickly go through and do some of the adjustments that do require a monitor set. Uh, not to mention, small TVs like this are really inexpensive. So, um, the the other port that I have in here for the signal meter. It, it always makes it nice when you come in and do a service call for a customer and you don't have to disconnect anything in their system to do some balancing. So, um, and those are a couple of things that uh, your customers will appreciate. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to connect the meter here. Uh, the meter, again, that we're using is a Holland ST4000, very good little signal meter, and we're going to connect it on the output of this splitter here that we were just talking about. Now, one, one thing that I am not going to be able to, um, to tell you is what level you need to adjust it at, because the, the adjustment for modulators is kind of relative to your situation and how you have it set up, whether you have amplifiers, whether um, it's a small system that's going directly to the TVs. I can show you basically uh, how to adjust all the modulators, but you'll need to know what kind of output you want. Um, if you are going into a rack mount amplifier or any kind of amplifier, I would look at the documentation for the amplifier and it will tell you, um, depending on how many modulators you have, what you can set each modulator to hit the amplifier with. And this is very important. If you have, let's say, a 20 channel system and you have the output of each of those modulators higher than what the amplifier can receive, you'll overdrive the amplifier and all your pictures on the output of the amp amplifier will look horrible. So, very important to pay attention to that. All right, we're going to spin this back around here. All 
Okay. Now on the on the uh, ST4000 here, to power up the meter, we're going to push this orange button here on the lower left. Once you push that, you got a little three second power up here and you're ready to go. On this meter you'll notice that you have, on the top left you have a channel number, on the top right you actually have a frequency which is the frequency for that channel number, and underneath it should say level and then give you uh, the level number. If for some reason on the bottom it says anything other than level, you may need to change the setting you're on using the zero key which is you'll notice is the second function key and number three. That'll allow you to cycle through. Um, you may have to hit it a couple times but you want it to say level under there for this step that we're doing here. We're going to go through each one of these channels here and we're going to adjust the RF output to all be the same. Um, it's very important that all these modulators have the same RF output level which is why we use the signal meter. Um, even on a small channel like this with six channels if you get one modulator that has too high of an output on it, it'll walk over the other channels and, and it'll affect the video. So again, very important that they're all the same level. So first channel on this system here is channel 2. So on, your, on the meter you're going to type in 2 and then enter or whatever channel you're balancing. And up in the top left here you should now see it uh, channel 2. Now as I turn this RF output adjustment here, you'll notice that that level goes up and down. So in this case we want to get it to 30 dB and then we move on to the next one. Uh, next channel on our system here is E which is channel 18. Again, 1-8, enter. And then we're going to adjust that down to 30 dB. Now I like to do all my RF outputs first, get all the levels the same, and then I'll go on and I'll show you the other, the other three adjustments on here. So the next channel we have on here is channel 26, which is M. Uh, next channel we have on here is 28. Okay, so after you get all six of the RF outputs adjusted on here, again, we want them all with the same exact output. The next thing we're going to go to is the RO level. Now, RO level adjusts the difference between the video and the audio levels. This is just as important as RF output because if this adjustment isn't right, it's going to affect one channel next to it, before it, ten channels away. It, it's, um, it's just as uh, detrimental to the system. So. Um, you want to make sure that this is adjusted to, um, I always shoot for about 15 dB difference between the video and audio. Now there's a feature on the, the ST4000 signal meter that allows you to see the difference between the two. What we're going to do on the meter is push the second button, the second function button, which is the zero, and then we're going to hit three, which is the, the VA. Now you'll, you'll notice that it changes to A next to your audio, where before it was V, now it's A. We want to hit it one more time. Now you should have, on the lower level, you should have a, a V with a forward slash A. This is giving you the difference between the uh, video and audio levels. So we want to go to channel 2. Go to channel 2 on the meter. Now my meter here is showing that it's 13 dB, again we want to go for 15. The RO level uh, adjustments are typically very sensitive, so uh, it just takes a very, very slight adjustment on these to uh, get it up to where you want it to be. Now the next one in our system, channel 18, we're going to do the same thing, we're going to adjust this adjustment on this one here to 15 again. Now as a rule of thumb it's between 15 and 17. I always go for 15 but uh, if, you know, if you can't get anything but 17 that's good too. Next channel we have on here is channel 26.
next channel we're going to do is channel O. All right, for our next adjustment here, we're not going to need the meter so we can power this off and set it down. For the next two adjustments, the audio deviation and the video modulation, we're going to use the monitor set here for those adjustments. Now the audio deviation is what controls the audio level between channels. So when your customer is surfing between channels, you don't want the audio levels to jump up and jump down so they're constantly adjusting their volume. We're going to do that with the audio deviation adjustment here. So we're going to turn up the volume on this a little bit. And you'll notice as I turn this audio deviation, you can hear the TV getting louder and quieter. So we're going to go through every single one of these channels here and to the best of our ability. And on a system that has satellite, I'd recommend uh, doing this before you turn the programming on. If you have all your channels on the preview channel, they all have the same audio source. It'll make getting the audio levels the same a lot easier. In this case, I have a couple DVD players, so it'll probably be a little bit different, but um, let's go ahead and do that right now. Now the next adjustment we're going to do here is the video modulation. Now the video modulation, you'll notice as I turn this up and down, our screen gets dark or really, really bright. And you'll notice when I have it turned up, colors start to get washed out. Um, sometimes you get a little green speckles depending on what your video source is. So we want to get it where the colors aren't washed out. They're, they're still colorful, but they're not too dark. We're going to go through every one of these channels here on the video modulation and do just that. We want to try and get them all just at that same point. Again, not too bright, but we don't want the we don't want it uh, we don't want the colors to be washed out. So let's do that right now. Now we've gone through and adjusted our RF output, our RL carrier on the meter, and made sure they're within our specs. We've gone through and adjusted the audio deviation and the video modulation using the television. There's a couple other things I want to go over with. You'll notice that on the front of all these modulators here, I have terminator caps. This isn't, um, most cases, this isn't going to be the end of the world if you don't have them. But at the price of a terminator cap, I always recommend them. Sometimes you get interference into your system through these ports. The other thing that I would highly recommend is investing in a torque wrench. Torque wrenches are very inexpensive. Uh, I would go with a 20 pound torque wrench. And it'll let you get each one of these F connectors perfectly snug every time. A loose, a loose connector on a system like this can also cause interference in the system. So those two things I would highly recommend to you. Again, they're very inexpensive, and they're going to make all the difference in the world. And uh, I would say one in every five, five systems it will probably save you a service call. Uh, now that we have our output here adjusted to 30 dB, you can put an attenuator on here. Um, you can send it out to your distribution, depending on whatever your your uh, system requires. Um, that's all there is to it. You're good to go.